Jay here from Stratford Paddock. This is the Paddock Podcast. You know what to do by now. We're live. Get involved in the comments and the chat. Joining me is the old and the new, right? We've got the new-ish in Joe Smith. Hello. Who's only been with us for about four years. Yep. Pathetic. Embarrassing. And we've also got the old school, <laughs> and you might not recognise him because he's got facial yeah. hair and he's all grown up. It. It's Charlie as a red from the full-time Devils days. And we were just chatting before, Charlie, when, the, when you first on the channel when we were full sand devils when yeah. was it eight years ago yeah eight years ago so it was i, I want to say it was 2013 yeah. it was like uh it was around this time of the year actually we mm. played city right. it was away and we lost and i just i berated small and i remember that and yeah there was on was the one on nanny yes, as well was that a different one no that was a uh, that was william oh it was william that sorry was william, yeah though. you small in. yeah no, sorry it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> same person really all, all, all mend into one after these years what can we say <laughs> you comments were, get him. You were what, 10 years old, 11 years old? <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. 10 years old, uh, the first one. I just went up to Adam because I'd, I'd seen him at a game like two weeks before. Yeah. And I said hi. And then he was like, oh, do you want to talk? Like, do you want to give us your thoughts on the game? And I was like, well, I mean, sure. And then I went home and I remember looking at it and it just kept going and I was like, oh. Yeah. If you can go and, and check that out, you can go and check out. We've still got loads of videos up from b back in the day on Full Time Devils and Charlie's event on there as well. Obviously, Joe, you're in charge of the comments in the chat. Yes. Today, we're going to be talking about Sir Jim Ratcliffe, the Glazers, and in true bullseye style with Shade Jaseem, could come, come and have a look what you could have won. Mm. Yeah? And it's not a speedboat. Because there's lots of stories doing the rounds that had Shea Jassim been successful with his takeover of Manchester United, because now he's pulled out of the race, in case you didn't know that, which I'm amazed if you didn't. Um, we would have had Mbappe and Camavinga and Coleman and a new stadium and the deck cleared and everything we wanted. But now we're stuck with just, you know, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, the one that everyone wanted 18 months ago. Yeah. But... You know, it's not 18 months ago anymore, is it? So everyone's a bit miffed. Well, are they? You can let me know. Get involved in the comments in the chat. Right, let's start it. Let's get into this then. Yeah, the whole... Here's with a little timeline. Mm -hmm. So, Saturday night, the news breaks. Sheikh Jassim, official, well, say officially, Romano breaks the news, which is kind of official, that Jassim is out. He's had enough. He's waited 11 months. It's not happening. The Glazers aren't accepting his offer. Mm -hmm. He's pulling out. His final offer. He made his it, final offer, yeah. yeah. Now, it looks like from other reports and stories we're reading that the Glazers and the board had kind of already decided or had decided they were going to go with Sir Jim Ratcliffe's latest offer, which was 25% of the club. That's probably why Sheikh Jassim was like, look, I'm done, because he knew what was coming. There's going to be a meeting on Thursday, a board meeting, to decide about his 25%. Now, according to the various reports, and there's lots of them floating around, the 25% by Sir Jim Ratcliffe will give him control of the football and sporting which is football, obviously, side of things. Mm -hmm. So he can have control over whether he wants to bring in Paul Mitchell or whoever yep. should have final say so on transfers. And also, according to some reports as well, he'll have a say on the, the stadium and things like that. It also seems like this could be the opening salvo in, in terms of getting a full takeover. Mm -hmm. So eventually, he'll want to take over the, the majority of the shares and have full control of the club. This is a developing story, so the first thing we need to do is wait and see what happens on Thursday. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's going to be a formality that they're going to vote for him, but yeah. you never know with Manchester United. No. Then we can maybe have a clearer picture. Then he could probably put out a statement of what he intends to do, and we can find out what's going on there. Now, while we're waiting for all this, it seems that everyone's sort of posturing about what we've missed out on. Yeah. Because the thing with Shade Jassim and the Qatari-backed bid, and it did look like it was Qatari-backed, was he had almost unlimited wealth. So he could have done all these magical things and these wonderful things mm. in terms of the stadium yeah. and getting rid of debt and the things that we wanted, to be fair. Yeah. Not, not dismissing that at all. Then we get into certain things where you go, mm, could that have happened? Getting Camavinga, getting Mbappe, getting Coleman. Yeah. Because FFP is still a thing, whether we like it or not, it is. We got fined for breaking FFP last year. So how do you think we're going to go out and buy Kylian Mbappe, Eduardo Camavinga and Kingsley Coleman? I'm not really sure, but you will get into that. Also... Are they going to come here? Is Eduardo Camavinga going to leave Real Madrid to come and play for Manchester United? Now, I love Manchester United. It's, you know, obviously my club. But let's be real here. Is that going to happen? Are Real Madrid even going to let him go? One of their best young midfielders. I can't see it. Also, Mbappe, how much is that going to cost? Is that going to happen? I know you might say, well, we've got unlimited money. We've changed the team, so it would have happened. FFP again. And also, is he going to come to United? I don't know, man. It, just, it all feels a bit like far-fetched, if I'm being brutally honest. Joe, I'll let you talk us through this because mm. you've got some of the quotes, the reports here because 
I have to admit, I'm taking some of these stories with a pinch of salt. Yeah. Because I think having money is one thing. Getting yeah. players to come is a completely different one. Getting clubs to sell them is a diff- another different one altogether. And you're talking with all these clubs about the biggest, richest clubs in the world as well. So it's not yeah. like the skin. Yeah, PSG aren't, aren't short of a few quid, are they? No, let's no, be honest. Not like, at all. This is the thing that does my head in is now we hear all these plans of Mbappe. Kingsley Coman, Camavinga, just seemingly three sort of random French players that, yeah. you know, not necessarily players we need or we've ever link, been linked with before. Coman we have on and off, but like it just, Mbappe clearly wants to go to Real Madrid at some point. So he's got to, he's got to agree to come as well in the first place. But just like, what is, what is this? Like, oh, you, you should have gone out with me because I'd have, I'd have bought you a nice meal. All right, we'll make your offer better then. Yeah. Like the only reason you are you don't own Manchester United is because your offer wasn't good enough. Yeah. You, you Man United is only worth what the Glazers say it's worth. As much as that pisses me off, yeah. I'm sure it pisses everyone else off. M- Manchester United is worth what the Glazers say it's worth. They own it. So if you can't get the best offer in, it doesn't matter what you would have given us. All that does is serves to highlight how bad you were in the biz- in, in, in the business room. Like you couldn't get the deal done. Oh, oh right. Sorry, is that our fault? Is that? I've, been, I've seen like, that. Like people yeah. like yeah, acting like I don't know. It's it's almost as if people are acting like shit. Just seems some sort of victim here. Yeah. Like, oh, sorry. You're, what are you? The tenth from the sort of tenth richest family on earth, like, or whatever. You know, like yeah. a seemingly unlimited amount of money. You're part of the, the, the Qatari royal family. You couldn't get the money together to buy Man United. And yet there was all this extra money that was going to buy us all of the top players in the world, get us a new stadium, redevelop the area, like all of this stuff. And yet Jim Radcliffe's offer, if you scale it up to being, a, you know, 25%, 1.7 billion, whatever, if you scale that up, values Manchester United more highly than Sheikh Jassim did. Yeah. So where's your infinite money there? Literally, it's not even, I mean, obviously it helps that the, the Glazers wanted to stay on and, and Jim Ratcliffe let them do that, I get that. But also, Jim Ratcliffe just valued Manchester United more. He, his bid is worth more money overall. Like, it's not very, like, I don't, yeah. don't give me all this shit about, oh, we would have done this, that, and the other. We got to buy us first. I don't, and, that's what I don't get, I don't get how people are so, Sort of pro shape the scene, right? You, uh, fair enough if you wanted change the scene. I've got good close friends, right? My best friend, like literally, he wanted Qatar, he wanted change the scene, and when it happened, he was ringing me on Saturday night and he was devoted and all the rest of it. I get that if that's what you want and you think that is our best way to compete and all the rest of it. What I don't get is how you, you suddenly you wanted that and you feel like change the scene is is a victim and has been outdone by because if he's going to spend billions and billions and billions, he could have gone a little bit more. He could have gone a little bit yeah, further exactly. and he could have usurped Sir Jim Ratcliffe. If you yeah. if you want the guitar and you think that they've got the best money and all the, the most money and all the rest of it, then I don't understand how you're looking at him going, oh, poor shit just seemed like he's a victim. He could have gone for it and if he was serious about it, he would have. I mean, you can dismiss that claim pretty quickly just by looking at that. It's like, how much do you reckon Mbappe, Coleman and Camavinga cost? 300 million, million, 400 million, yeah. million, something yeah. like that. I think Mbappe um, could break a record for and how much transfer this, easily. Well, I, I don't even think they're telling for 300, really. It's like, yeah. how much would that cost? But yeah. that's besides the point anyway. It's like, Instead of saying you're going to commit all this money to the club, how about you just put it in the offer first and then once you've got it, then, like you say, everyone's coming out and saying they've got all this unlimited money. They're saying what they could have done if they'd have bought the club, but as Joe's rightly said, they've not stumped up the money for it, so yeah. they can't really be too bitter about it. And also, I know that we just, like, the hunt, the, the, and we'll get to the Jim Ratcliffe stuff because people are saying, because we're, we're criticising the, the, this sort of PR, or I am anyway, yeah. this kind of PR that's come out after the fact about Sheikh Jassim. And like you said, like everyone sort of feels sorry for him. Like that doesn't necessarily mean I'm 100% happy with the way it is playing out. And we'll get into that in a minute. That This isn't the point we're making at the moment. But it's also not impossible that Sheikh Jassim could have said, all right then, if you want to stay, I'll buy 25% with a view to a full sale, but it's in contract in five years, I own 100%. He mm-hmm. could have done that as well. It's like, we all just accepted that Sheikh Jassim can only buy 100% up front right now, no matter what. He could have been a bit more lenient if he wanted to. He could have played the game a bit more like like um, Jim Ratcliffe has done. Well, when it's not like he, he's got a, some legal right to only own 100% or 0% of Man United. There were other ways this could have gone down. Exactly, I just don't, this is the one thing that just baffles me a little bit. It's this whole like, you know, Shea just seems the, the, the victim and all this. I don't mm-hmm. think he is. Like, if he wanted a club, he could have bought a club. He's got uh, access to all this dough. And if he really wanted it, he could have gone, look, let's just get it over the line. Whatever Sir Jim Ratcliffe's doing, I'll do that, but I'll give you more. 
Well, exactly, because I, I can't say I followed the story as intensely on Sir Jim Ratcliffe's side, but I, I swear when he first wanted the club that he, he didn't want 25%, did he? I assume no, he, want, he, wanted, he wanted the he, full first, thing and it was going to be backed within that spot, point, wasn't it? He wanted so, 69% of the club, which is the Glazers' shares. Then the people that own the other shares kicked off and said, hang on a minute. We're not. What, what, what's this? Leave, where's this leave us? We just got to sit here with our shares. Mm. So apparently, what he's doing is he's buying both. He's buying some Glazer shares and some of the other shares as well. But mm-hmm. he's worked it. He's gone right. Okay, how can I get this over yeah. the line? She just seemed could have done that. Mm. He could have, like you yeah. were saying. He could have said, "All right, what is it? This could be more attractive to them." All right, I want the club. I'm, I'm, I'm a massive United fan. I've got all this dough. I've got all these plans. I'm willing to wait another three or four years. First of all, though, I want sporting control so I can mm. start doing all these things that we spoke about with the Mbappes and all the rest of it. Mm. Eventually, I want to own the Manchester United because that's what Sir Jim Ratcliffe's doing. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's just that's that's the one thing I don't get with this argument we're seeing. And another, well, there's several things I don't get. And another thing I'm seeing as well is fans blaming other fans. Yeah. Well, if you'd have backed it, this, you know what? 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 What do you honestly think? Fans could have done, us fans could have done. We've been protesting against the Glazers since 2005, yeah? When we were winning trophies, we were doing it. When we weren't winning trophies, we were doing it. We had a sitting not long ago, the Forest game was there. We had a walkout not long ago before that, was there. Did all that stuff, yeah? What 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 else did we needed to do to get Sheikh Jassim to buy Manchester United? What, where would the protest have gone? And he'd have gone, oh, I'll tell you what now. Mm. Now, now that they've left the ground a little bit earlier than they were going to, or... They've done that protest a little bit longer than the, the original plan. Now I'll pay the extra billion quid. That's nonsense. Mm. It's not the fans' fault no. that Sir Jim Ratcliffe has bought the club. So if you're angry about Sheikh Jassim not buying Manchester United, the people to blame for that are Sheikh Jassim and his people and the Glazers. Because that's who's caused this. Not Manchester United fans or even Sir Jim Ratcliffe. You knew what he was trying to do. He was trying to buy Manchester United and he's done it. Yeah. What are you blaming him for? You should be looking at the people that didn't let that happen. And that's Sheikh Jassim who dropped the ball with it. Yeah. And the, and the Glazers, who didn't want to go down the route what he was offering, because I said this from day one, and I'll say it again, they don't care what you're going to do once you've bought the club. You could say once I buy this club, I'm going to make a new stadium that fits half a million people in it, and I'm going to spend 17 billion quid on it, and it's going to float on, on the moon. They don't care. No. All they care about is how much dough they're getting. The Glazers yeah. wouldn't even care if it moved out of Manchester. No. Like, you no. could you say I'm building I mean. a stadium in, I don't know, yeah. Wales. They don't give yeah, a shit. Yeah, they would not care. They yeah, would not care. care. Yeah, would not care. They exactly. just yeah. want the most amount of dough. That's, That's how thing. you get it to work. Jim Ratcliffe's bid amounts to more money. It values Man United more favourably than, than the, the Qatari bid. That's... That's, that is it. That's yeah. what it comes down to. They wanted to stick around for a little bit because they think the value could go up even more than it already has. Mm-hmm. And the 1.7 or whatever it is billion times that by four is more than what Sheikh Jassim was offering for the full thing. So like, mean, it, it, you know, we can get into the Jim Ratcliffe stuff and I think we should get into the Jim Ratcliffe stuff in a minute. Yeah. Um, but before that, I just want to read this from um, Carve Solico who's talking about um, Sheikh Jassim walking away from the deal. And this, this, this is a bizarre tweet in my eyes, right? So I'm going to go through this, and this is according to a source, supposedly from, as I say supposedly, this is a source from Sheikh Jassim's team or entourage or, you know, whatever the phrase is. Someone in the know on on his side of things. He says, what is happening is totally unreal. The Glazers' valuation is insanely fanciful. Sheikh Jassim offered them almost double the market capitalization. He was a cash buyer. He was going to clear their debts. There would be no new debt, and he was going to put in another 1.4 billion for the stadium and the team. And that still wasn't enough for the Glazers. What we're left pardon me, with now, after almost a year, is someone who's going to overpay for 25% of the club. They are arguably the greatest and most historic football club on the planet. And after a year, there's just one bidder and he can only stump up enough for 25%. It's a joke. If they just wanted to sell to a minority stake, they could have done that privately last November. The market dictates that United are what United are worth, not the Glazers or Rain. Remember when there were apparently eight serious bidders? All along, there's only been one bidder for 100% of the club, so why should he bid against himself? Ratcliffe is overpaying, and any higher um, valuation than Sheikh Jassim is sheer lunacy. If he can only afford to buy 25% to start with, who's going to pay for the new stadium? Who's going to fix the leaking roof? Who's going to pay for the new training centre and new players and community projects? United can't keep up with Brighton these days, never mind City, Liverpool and Arsenal, and don't even think about the likes of Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. If they go with Ratcliffe, they get another shareholder. How does that help the decision-making? Where is the new vision, new ambition? Where is the engagement with the fans? Sheikh Jassim tried uh, to bridge the gap between reality and lunacy on his valuation. 
he did his best. He did his best? Jesus wept. So you think like some uh, sort of war veteran? Yeah. What are you yeah. on about? <laughs> he did his best. I mean, he didn't. He could have spent more and got us. Yeah. And also, that just seems like pure client journalism. That. That's just like, it's put out these things that I want you to say that yeah. make me look good after I've just lost. Yeah. I mean, it's truly pathetic. It after really I come out of a situation looking bad, yeah, write something to make me look a little bit bad. Because also, yeah. usually when you get something that's an unnamed source, that's usually because it's information that wasn't publicly available before that is now sort of bringing new light to the story but you don't want to reveal who it was this is like an interview with someone there's no new information there it's just the facts we already know put into a sort of anti jim ratcliffe pro shake jassim frame and sort of put out there like you said jay almost like you know tell me what to say and i'll say it i just some of this stuff is you know, talking about the market dictates what United are worth, not the Glazers or Rain. Well, that's not true, is it? No. That, they dictate what the shares are worth, but look what has just happened. The Glazers dictate what United is worth oh, because, mm. because it, 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 that's literally what has just unfolded. So you can say, you know, I can tell you this watch, yeah, you can get a new one for 100 quid, but if you want mine, it's 150. Yeah. And I don't have to sell it for any less than that. That's no. literally what the Glazers have just done. So, you know, it, it does seem a little bit of sour grapes to me from... Um, from this person who is seemingly speaking, um, you know, with Sheikh Jassim uh, on their side. It just seems very strange, like, if he can only afford to buy 25%, who's going to pay for the new stadium? All he's able to do is stump up enough for 25%. He's offered higher than that, like we said before. He offered and was willing to go over 50% of the club, take full, like, you know, control of the club, um, Jim Ratcliffe. But the Glazers didn't want that. It's not that he wasn't able to pay that, you know, Unless that is the case, but no one has reported that Jim Ratcliffe didn't have enough money to buy 51% of Man United or no. 69 or whatever He's it was worth more than Sheikh Jassim. He's well, worth more than Sheikh Shay Jassim's money. If you look at the individual wealth, so Jim Ratcliffe thinks worth about 30 billion. Sheikh Jassim's individual wealth is like one and a half billion or two billion or something. Yeah. It's, this whole idea that it's not Qatari Bats doesn't make any sense if it's yeah. not coming from the Qatari money because that is where all the money would be that's where you need all the money to come from because yeah. he wouldn't have enough on his own he yeah. wouldn't have enough to do all these things he promised not from his own individual wealth yeah. he must have access to more wealth to make all this work yeah. and i just find this whole narrative really strange yeah. it's like instead of going right okay this is who our new owner's going to be or he's going to own 25 percent right let's hold his feet to the fire let's challenge him which i will do by the way i will be like you know questioning him i'm just ca gonna carry mm -hmm. on protesting against the glazers don't think that's done no i'm gonna be in from the 1958 on this channel later on this week so don't think this is all why we're all okay with this now because i personally ain't yeah but instead of going down this road it feels like we're all going oh no shit just see him look what could we could have had with him and look how, how poor it is and he did his best he tried his best and i think have you know he gets a lot of things right on sky but he's had a lot of things wrong over this I remember him doing a story about the fact that the, the bids had come in the fourth round of bids they both come in and then an hour later, saying they hadn't, when it became obvious, obvious they hadn't. That. Do you remember that? I remember And he went that, on yeah. Sky and he went, we were hearing reports mm. that the bids had come in. And now that fight, we found out it's not true. You were the one reporting the bids had come in. Yeah. You the one that said it. Do you know what I mean? So it, that doesn't make any sense. So yeah, yeah I just feel this, oh, some of this is borderline hysterical. Yeah, we've got a few um, comments. Um, some people, I think, either purposely or accidentally kind of missing the point. Uh, Hasby Chowdhury says, how are you talking about personal worth when you're always saying it's state-backed? That's literally the point. That's literally what I just yeah. said. Yeah. Is what, is, what are you on about? I've just said you cannot have enough money to do all the things you want unless it's state-backed. Yeah, exactly. Jesus wept. Um, he's not worth more, not even close. Again, you've literally just oh my God. went on to say My that. head hurts, man. Well, are, yeah. these, is this, are these bots or what? Like, am I not speaking clearly enough right the point i'm making i'll say it again is that if sheikh jasim was going to do all the things that he promised to do he doesn't have enough wealth individually to do it so he must have access to more wealth yeah. which would come from qatar that is literally the point i'm making yeah uh, we've got a few super chats nabil akbar says uh, if you have more money that doesn't mean that you spend it stupidly they were planning on paying double the valuation you guys deserve what's coming for you Ooh. yeah uh, happily. cool okay uh I Very mean, threatening. yeah, and also the other thing is, th there's you don't have a like, just a right to own Man United. Like, if you don't bid what the sellers want, you don't get it. Not it's not the I mean, you know, it's it's, it like doesn't matter just, whether they were nonsense. willing to pay double the evaluation. It wasn't enough, oh, and, and it, that may pain you. That may pain me. You know, we'll get into our opinions on it, but you know, just look at what's actually happened. We can't pretend that if they'd paid more, they wouldn't have bought it. Do you know what makes me laugh, right? 18 months ago, we did a, a live stream when Ineos were doing their live Q&A, yeah? And I was here, it was seven o'clock on a Monday, and we did it. 
And every single person in the chat, there wasn't one who didn't want Ratcliffe. I know. Every yeah. single person I know looked at him as the saviour. And now every single person looks at him as the Antichrist. Now listen, I don't want the Glazers to stay. I don't, I've said that all along, I've been saying that since I was 25 years old and I'm a lot older than that now. It's not like I'm sat here going, yeah, great, the Glazers stay. I'm not. My point I'm making is, a, we keep protesting against him. B, this looks like this could be an end game where eventually they do leave. And C, we ain't getting Shakes to see him. It's all a moot yeah. point with him. It's done now. The only thing I'm certain of is that he ain't having it. Yeah. Because Ben Jacobs and everyone else who's reliable has said 100% he's not having this club. Yeah. Let's um, get through some of the comments and let's get on our opinions on actually what is happening, which is this seemingly, obviously there's a bit, there's a... Um, uh, a, a bid, not a bid, a, a vote on Thursday yeah, yeah. to get this 25% bid through. But let's we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Reese says, Qatar didn't do enough, but maybe a partnership between Jim Ratcliffe and Qatar would have been a good result. Good sports people and lots of money, potentially. See, that's, that's not a ridiculous idea. I wonder whether they'd have gone for it. They did, no. That was the team that's my issue. Yeah, yeah I, no, I don't know if they'd have gone like, let's, let's partner up. And I don't know if even if Sir Jim Ratcliffe would have partnered up with Emmy because it, it seems to me he wants to be in control. Yeah. And then yeah. who out of shape to see him as a Jim Ratcliffe in that scenario is... is who's going to be the face of it? Really, yeah, who's going to you know, be the face like and who's pulling the trigger on certain deals? Yeah. Um, Abhinav Verma says, a billionaire crying that he's the victim. Shock horror. I mean, I get you want to build a stadium on the moon, but Ponytail Baldy Face doesn't care. Uh, Nabil well, said, Akbar says, uh, when you will be Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Glazer out, remember this day. Um, Elias too said, can we talk about Sir Jim Ratcliffe, please? He's the LA. Yes, I would That's like to talk about That's a great point. That. Like, Let's talk about Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Because <laughs> and also, when you will be Glazer out? We're already Glazer out. We're well, it, glazer it, out. Yeah, oh, it's exactly. not changing, is it? Oh, no. Honestly. Well, on that then, the Glazers aren't leaving short term. They are still going to be here, mm -hmm. still in control of Manchester United, which I think we can all agree is shit, mm -hmm. isn't it? No one wants that. No. However, I think when, you, when you're in a position, the best thing and the, and the main thing you can do is let's look at, right, is this position likely to get better or likely, likely to get worse? What we are hearing so far is that Jim Ratcliffe wants the Glazers to be fully out of Manchester United. He wants full control, Yeah. which to me puts me in a slightly more opti position, uh, optimistic position than I was 18 months ago, where it looked like the Glazers were going nowhere. Yeah. You know, they, they will be here for as long as we can imagine. Now, yes, it may not be what everyone wants. It may not be full sale immediately, which everyone wants. However, I feel we're in a better position now than we were 12 months ago. Would you agree with that? Or do you think, obviously, there's a, there's a lot of things to unpick here. What are your thoughts on Jim Ratcliffe buying 25% of Man United? I'm hopeful that this is him, his steps towards taking over from them. Because, listen, there's no perfect owners of Manchester United, but I think Sir Jim Ratcliffe would be a better owner of United than the Glazer family. Yeah. I do. I honestly believe that. And if this is the first step towards him taking control of United, I'm all for it. Because let's not forget, this is how the Glazers bought United. The Glazers didn't come in in 2004 and... I know they bought it was up, like they got the control and interest in 2005, but I think they started buying up shares in the early noise, mm. and then they bought like 10 percent, 17 percent, 30 percent until the going. yeah, and then it was the compulsory purchase order when they had enough to force a takeover. So if that's what this is, then that makes sense to me, and that is preferable to the Glazers being controlled. My only worry, this is my main worry, is this isn't putting the Glazers on live support. This mm. isn't a way of them staying around for another 18 years or whatever. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. the that's my, it, that's my big worry. Now, I doubt it, because I'd be very surprised if Sir Jim Ratcliffe is just going 25% and then I'm done. As long as I've got control, I just want my 25% and then them lot are yeah. still going to own the, most of the majority of the club. I don't see that happening, but that is my worry because we don't know yet, do we? No, we're not too sure. I mean, it's strange, really, because you can, I don't know, you look at it from the Glazers perspective it's like some of them obviously wanted to sell and I guess a few obviously had doubts after a while um, so it gives the ones who wanted to sell a bit of the cast in, uh, injection so they can go and do whatever they want I guess but the main worry is like you say what if in seven eight year, nine years time as transfer fees keep going up and everything keeps going up what if the club's then worth whatever shake you see had already put a bid in for and it's worth five six billion uh, and then it becomes we've still got the Glazers there so it's mm. just awkward isn't it but well, we have to hope that Sir Jim Ratcliffe is trying to buy the full club. And also, I'd say we're in a better position we are than we were a few days ago because until the news had come out, it just 
seemed at a standstill, really. So at least well, we're moving in some kind of direction. Mm. I honestly thought, if you asked me a couple of weeks ago, I thought we, they were going to stay completely. Yeah, yeah I, 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 agreed. I was beginning to lose any sort of optimism or hope that, that any sale was going to go through. I thought it's gone on for 11 months now. We keep hearing rumblings about they wanted to wait to the World Cup after the World Cup in America because they thought there could be uh, American billionaires who from suddenly, that, yeah. you know, love soccer because mm. they've seen the World Cup and want to spend a lot of money on United. So I was like, oh, this I sounds like it could drag on and on and on. I do think as well, like, if we're looking at Jim Ratcliffe, just as a sort of businessman, his business acumen is better than any of the, the Glazer siblings. Their dad basically got them, got their money. They only got the and, club because the dad yeah, died. That's yeah, it. They got it handed down to him, essentially. Jim Ratcliffe is, w is worth more money than they are, so financially has more weight to throw around, mm -hmm. is more of an actual businessman than any of they are. They're just sort of this kind of succession brats, aren't they? kids yeah. sort of fighting for their, you know, th their dad's money. So I do expect that you know, we are moving to a point where the Glazers will leave. I just, I just really hope that, that we are and that it isn't, like you said, them changing their mind again. Actually, now, you know, we think the next 25%, instead of it costing 1.7 billion, that's going to cost you 2.5 billion. And the, and the final 25% or whatever, that's going to cost you 3.5 yeah. billion. And actually, Jim Ratcliffe ends up paying or maybe refusing to pay, which would be the worst case scenario, eight, nine billion for United because, well, inflation, you can't, you know, it's not going to cut because 1.7 is what it cost 2023. Unless United go down in value or, you know, football generally goes, you know, drops down in value, yeah, which is the, the next 25 happen, is going to cost even more. So that's a worry because I guess, obviously, Jim Ratcliffe and his team will have thought of this as well. I just don't want a situation where we are then priced out from the next 25% and the no. next 25% and the Glazers keep control for five or 10 years. That would be a disaster because we've already seen their decision-making is so horrendous that, you know, as long as they're here, I just, I genuinely can't see United being successful again to, the, to the sort of highest degree. So that's the main concern in it, that they, that they don't sell and that this isn't a step in the right direction. It's just a step in a sideways direction where they get a billion quid in cash to spend on what they want. Yeah, and I'm sure that thing won't be Manchester United. I just think as well, like, fair play to Kieran Maguire, because I remember a couple of years ago, 18 months ago, whenever it was, and it was not long after Sir Jim Ratcliffe had put that bid in for Chelsea, and Kieran Maguire said he wants to buy United. This is before the Glazers had announced this strategic alternative. Was this before all the Chelsea stuff as well? No, it was just oh, after was around just that, after. and he said, look, he put a bid in for Chelsea that was late, and lower than Todd Burley's. He said yeah. he had no chance of winning that, that takeover. Mm. And he said it felt like it was a message to the Glazers saying, look, I've got money and I want to spend it on a football club mm -hmm. and I, you know, I'm here. And then he said about Sir Jim Ratcliffe, he said, look, the guy's 70. A lot of what he's thinking now is about his legacy, what he's going to be leaving behind, not what, he's not going to be here for the next 50 years. It's like, okay, if he can come in and be the guy that sorts Manchester United out, well, that is a great legacy. Yeah. That's what Kieran Maguire said, and this was before any of this. So if you look at it from that point of view, then I'm hoping that's right, and that is it, what he's about, and he wants to take control, and he wants to sort Manchester United out. I'm hoping he just doesn't want to come in, give the Glazers a load of money, and make a few changes that don't amount to nothing, yeah. because that would be, be disastrous. But you have to think that for a man who's quite savvy, he's made a lot of money, he isn't probably going to be around, right, yeah. long yeah. enough to make a big profit on this from no, United. Yeah. Because it's probably going to take 20, if you spend Look at the Glazers, double, yeah, 18 years. 18 yeah. years. If you so spend also double years. what the pr the value is, what the market value is, it's going to take a long time for you to get a return on that investment and the profit on that. And also, how much profit are you going to get when you're already worth 30 bill? Is it going to be yeah. that much? Does it really matter? Yeah. yeah. So I just wonder, and I'm, I hope, and I don't know, I just hope that he's coming in because he wants to leave a legacy of the man that basically saved Manchester United from the Glazers. <laughs> I mean, it's tough, isn't it? We have to bite our tongues on it until he, you know, comes out and it's announced and everything, and then we can start getting a bit more excited about it until he actually shows some intention of doing that as well. Yeah. Because as we've seen, obviously, with the Glazers, it's not always going to go perfect when you get a new owner in, so. Yeah. No, you're right. That's the other thing, in it? Like, this, we're, we're, we're just at the, the first step of this now. It feels because like such a standstill, though, after yeah. the last 18 months but we've, of like, we've all had that this, talk. Like, you know, they're going to sell, they're not going to sell, they're going to sell, they're not going to sell. Silence. Okay, looks like Jim Ratcliffe's going to sort of, you know, breach through the sort of wall a little bit. There's a change. Something's happening. A part of Man United is being sold. He doesn't have a controlling stake, but he has a stake with some control. If, if this thing is true about him being um, sort of leading the sporting thing, that kind of makes sense to me because the Glazers would probably not 
you know, be happy to give up some of that control. They must see they aren't great at buying players yeah, or, they must know you know, that. hiring people. They don't have to be idiots to go, hmm, let's look at the finishes. First, second, first, second, first, second, third, first, 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 second, third, first, sixth, fourth, second, third, sixth, fourth. Like, they don't have to be a genius to work out things haven't gone that well for the last 10 years yeah just look at how much we bought players for exactly and how much we sold them on for. even yeah just if they just look at it from a purely financial perspective we are losing money on players left right and center we ain't winning many trophies okay maybe someone else needs to have a go at this take a bit of the heat off them the, i can see from their perspective why they'd want to do that and from jim Ractor's perspective if this is the start of him owning the full club or owning the controlling you know majority of the club then he will want some kind of tangible proof that they are actually you know going to back that put their money where their mouth is and say here's the control you can have but that hasn't happened yet we haven't had any press conference any word from Jim Ratcliffe any if anything official from the Glazers this is all just speculation of we're all getting so worked up and I think rightly so because it's been such a point of contention for so long but we actually like you just said we need to hear what is your intention like we would with any owner what are you going to do what are you not going to do how are you going to avoid mistakes being repeated from the past and how are we going to be successful well, going forward and that's what i'm looking forward to and hopefully yeah. we'll hear that next week one thing i will expect though is and it's going to annoy a lot of people i think he's going to be very guarded about what he says about the glazers because be nice he, he's not there. he's gonna he can't come out and go these clowns have wrecked this football you won't do a run yet yeah so the sooner I get rid of him the better because this is an absolute bin fire he's not gonna say that obviously he can maybe set out his plans and here's what I want to do and we're gonna you know here's how we're gonna be successful yeah, yeah. That, but I, I, I don't expect him to be too negative about the Glazers which I think is gonna upset a lot of people because I think a lot of people like you were saying would want a Ralph Ragnick sort of turbocharged press conference Start where we just start yeah, it's open out this club's a mess you, yeah. this is going to take years to fix and I'm just inheriting an absolute pile of dog do he ain't going to do that and I know like we'd love to hear him say that but I think if he's going to be realistic and he's working with these people and also he's trying to buy more of the club off him we're not going to we're not going to hear that kind of language no matter how much we'd love to no yeah uh, we've got a few super chats um, Reese says, seeing Gary Neville's tweet and Musk's statement, uh, we need more detail. Yeah, we do need more detail. That's the thing, you know, that's the, the next devil's step in the details, in as you say. Yeah, exactly. Because this could be a net positive, it could be a net negative. If he just says, actually, you know, I'm just here, let the Glazers carry on running things, I'll be a silent investor, it's essentially business as it was before. Yeah. And we've come out of this with the worst possible scenario, which is the Glazers have got more money, so less reason for them to sell and they still retain control, that would be horrendous. And even but we're worse. hopeful that that's not the case. You know what, right? I'm not ITK me. I'm not, I, I've said that ever since I started blogging about United over 20, well, about 18 years ago, whenever it was. But I keep hearing these reports that all the staff are gutted. And I do know people that work at the club. Mm. And that isn't the f- what I'm hearing from them. I'm hearing that they're like, all right with it. Yeah. So I don't want to speak for all of them, but this whole thing of like the, uh, all the staff are gutted, it's not Qatar. I don't, I don't know where that's coming from. I don't that's know not that's my conversations it. that I've been having like with a few people. Is not that's not the case. So I don't know, man. It seems like certain people are just putting stuff out there where maybe they're speaking to different people, or maybe they're just being told that. I don't know. It just seems a little bit weird. Some of the stories that I'm hearing, yeah. because when you're trying to get them stood up, and you think, all right, let's let's see if that's the case. It's like some people are like more no. PR, exactly what this entire saga needed. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. man. It more just PR. Seems, yeah, it well, just that's seems what we've seen in it. Last last forty eight hours has just been the PR team for both Jim Ratcliffe and Shake Justin. Last just eleven months, months to be honest with you, bro. But in particular, now nah, you're right. A, yeah. a rebel it's been rebel yeah. because now it's like the gloves are off. Yeah, for, proper. For, yeah, so people are coming out and going. Shake just seems promising this, and also from so Jim Ratcliffe, you know, we covered it in the news this morning. The, the Times have been quite pro Ratcliffe if we can mm. use that term came coming out and said he's going to build a 90,000 seat stadium or he's going to redo the stadium yeah. so it can yeah. hold 90,000 they they've been sort of putting stories out from his point of view yeah. or what are quite positive towards him other publications have been a bit more like the, I think the mail was it Mike Keegan at the mail has been quite yeah sort Negative of again I'm I'm wary of you know pro yeah shape to seem is not the right word but more positive stories about him and more stories mm. about him and his bid than the other way around or the other side of it so this is probably going to carry on it might even carry on forever do you know what i mean the night is still being 10 years <laughs> time hearing feels. about stories about how you know when united lose he'll be like well they wouldn't have lost on the shade just scene shade just seems going to make sure we didn't lose that game yeah, i exactly. hope you're ready for all the tweets Hon- oh honestly <laughs> it's like 
I get it, right? I get people that wanted it are frustrated. I understand all that. But there's a big part of me thinks like, that's done now. Let's focus on this. Let's focus mm. on... If he's coming in, yes, hold him to account. I want to hold him to account more than as much as anyone. Yes, still criticise and call out and protest against the Glazers because they're still here. That's yeah. what we need to focus on. Not this, all this nonsense about you know what we didn't get for Christmas. Well, one of the things we didn't get for Christmas, the, um, I mean, the, the a potential yeah. new stadium, yeah. and, and one in particular that you liked the look of the concept image. If we can just get that up, <laughs> this was what we, this is what um, Sheikh Jassim would have built for us apparently, um, if if. Um, He'd have owned Manchester United. That was option. That that was option A. That was option. Now, a. I'm not. I'm not a um, a structural engineer or a, a builder or a city planner or an architect or anything like that. But can we just put that up again? <laughs> like, and again, I'm, yeah, I'm no, sort of using my eyes on the scale here. Are we saying that this stadium would have been basically f- running from about? I'm going to guess from about Stratford to Cheetah Mill. <laughs> Are we it, is, it is yeah. absolutely Huge. gigantic. Are we saying it? that this stadium's probably going to be about... 400,000 seats? 400,000 seats, yeah. about yeah. two, maybe three miles long. <laughs> yeah, Looking at that picture gigantic. there. I'll be that, picture yeah, that's what, so We've got four different yeah. games going on at the I same time. I think you time. could probably fit everyone in Manchester well, in no, it. The, the plan was to play every Premier League game in on Saturday, state. 3 o'clock. At once. At once. Just yeah, in the City United will be at home at the same time. It'll be it'll be blessed. Now, yeah. I'm not saying he wouldn't have built a new stadium, and I'm not saying it might have looked a little bit like that. It's, I don't think it would have been that big, yeah. because that's like, you would have had to nuke Manchester to clear the, <laughs> the sort of city centre yeah. to build that. It just seemed a bit like, oh, really? It yeah. looks like he's um, copied and pasted the Allianz Arena, put some United <laughs> logos on it, and then yeah. enlarged it by two times. I didn't think that was a, a fan-made concept, but it did, <laughs> certainly did the rounds where people... I love the it. facts as well. Like It's like, listen, don't worry about everything that's there as well because you can see like parts of the city Manchester, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll just, just, we'll just buy all that like <laughs> yeah. that's already owned by half of it's owned by Abu Dhabi as well we'll buy all that and we'll bulldoze it and we'll build this stadium yeah Gary like, Neville's going to give you the hotel yeah I love that ambition to be fair but it's also a nonsense yeah um, a couple of uh, super chats Abdullah Ibrahim says do we know if it's a personal investment from uh, from Jimmy or is it through <laughs> Ineos can't seem to find anything concrete also who will pick up the debt I don't think there is anything concrete on the, on those two things I think they sort of amount to the same thing yeah, yeah. in yeah. the sense that I thought the debt was Ineos was going to say that Ineos that might um, yeah, exactly. the least financial yeah. expert I think it, <laughs> it, it hasn't been made a con- right. official concrete just yet the rumours like you said yeah. was that the debt would be put on Ineos which is essentially the same as well it, the, the the debt isn't being put on United. That's yeah, one thing that I think on no one has reported company, so yeah. far. The Glazers, when they bought it, the debt was put on the club. When when Jim Ratcliffe buys it, the debt will be put on himself or his own business, which is obviously, you know, maybe less than ideal. But again, it isn't debt that is United are being lumbered with. We don't have to pay the interest on that debt mm-hmm. through the club like we currently have to. So, uh, to me, that seems relatively palatable. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, um, it kind of makes sense. Uh, it's it's a it's just annoying in it that we've still got all this debt. Yeah. Like we're still here. You remember in two thousand and five? Well, you remember you weren't, weren't born and you were probably about seven or something. I was one. I was twelve. You were one. I'm I'm sorry, one. You were one. Sorry, you were one and twelve. I was in the boardroom. I'm sure you were reading the Financial Times at, uh, <laughs> at the same time. But Business I remember insider. like the whole thing was about the debt. That's what everyone was mm. kicking off about. It wasn't the the we didn't know how badly we we're going to manage the club and everything else. Although yeah. we, cons- we suspected it. It was this debt you're plowing a club into, and it was about six hundred, seven hundred million quid's worth of debt. Forgive me, I've forgotten the exact figure. And we're at the same now. It's yeah. not gone down. And they always said that the, the noise from the Glazers was, we will, over the period of time, get rid of the debt. Mm. That will go. And they didn't. They just kept taking dividends, kept having these sort of never-ending loans and all the rest of it. And the debt just kept increasing or staying pretty much where it yeah. didn't move. So that is a real frustrating element of this. So if we can get yeah. rid of the debt, that would be a big deal, I think, for a lot of us Massive. as well, who were initially were like, yeah. that is the reason we didn't want the Glazers. I think the only thing they ever did, which maybe in their eyes they consider lowering the debt, was... There was a point when the interest rates, Kieran Maguire was chatting about this, he mentioned it to me a while ago, where the interest rates on the debt, and this is, I'm just picking these numbers out there, but I'll just I'll use it as a contract. Mm-hmm. Let's say the interest rates used to be 20% on these yeah. loans. They're now like 7%. So maybe in the Glazers' eyes, they went, well, theoretically, the you know eventual debt has been limited by the fact that the interest rate, but they've literally done nothing in terms of concrete. Here's what it used to be. Here's what it is now. It's you know just what? It's, it's, it's right as well because yeah. when you stood in Old Trafford and the roof's leaking on you and you're watching the Scousers batter you, yeah. it's like you can go, well, 
the interest rates have gone down. The interest rates have gone down a bit, which is great. It makes everything better, really. That's like a trophy in itself. It is. Um, Tina Tellefson Totoka says, will the new director of football have full power when it comes to transfers or will the Glazers have the last say? The Glazers will have the last say on anything if they want it because they own most of Man United. So that's... Well, this is the thing, Every decision is that. We also don't know if we're going to get a new director of football. That's the rumour. This whole thing has been this morning with a lot of papers is that he's some... I know he's only going to hold 25%, but he's going to have full sporting control mm. now what do the other glazers individually own do they own any of them own more than 25 percent not clear. would he be the biggest individual mm. shareholder let's have a look because we know that between the six of them mm-hmm. they own 69 percent how is that spread out because i believe that joel owns a bit more than some of the others yeah and i think we'll have Rob. trevor and duncan and chaniqua cashed in a load of theirs not long ago so according to Statista.com, yeah. these are the largest shareholders at Manchester United as of September 2022 by total voting power. Mm-hmm. Right. So as it stands, Joel Glazer owns the most yeah. um, at 19%. Yeah. Darcy oh. Glazer owns 18 Brian owns 17 Avram yeah. owns 14 Kevin owns 13 and Edward owns 13 Kevin, essentially 12.98. Can't start <laughs> making names up. Um, Who are these people? So that is according to statista.com. I don't know where they've got their information. It says, I can see the source. The source, you need an account to see the source. Oh. So, um, well, that, let's just that's let's take it as a lie. Let's just say for the sake of argument. Yeah. Would so obviously that, obviously that, that, would that would voted put, in power adds That up. would put Sir Jim Ratcliffe as a bigger shareholder than any of them individually. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that might be the way he's getting sporting control. If he's like, well, I am the biggest individual shareholder. Yeah, obviously they will I vote will. as one. Yeah, mm. but I'm going to be... Though, isn't it? I don't know. I presume that's how this could work because we are even he's going to be in control of sporting yeah. decisions. So how does that happen if you're not... I mean, we don't know how tight net the Glazer family are and how consistent they are on agreeing to everything when it comes to Manchester United-related issues. I mean, I'd be some te- of them I'd could... Be, I'd be texting yeah. Darcy. Yeah. Going, your Kevin says you're right, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, do you know what I mean? Oh, Get yeah. Edward involved. Ed- Edward, you should have heard yeah. what Joel was saying about you. The other yeah. day, yeah, yeah. Proper, proper slacking off. Stir it up. Says your missus is well ugly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Get them that. scrapping because yeah. obviously they they're going to vote as a block, aren't they? And that's the assumption yeah. is that they own it's individual. But like you said, it is a good point that if that is correct, and if the rumours that Sir Jim Ratcliffe is going to own 25% of Man United is correct, including a lot of it being those Class B shares, which are the ones that, you know, you can buy... That's a good point. You can well, buy, if he's taking some of theirs away, yeah. they're going to go down as well. Yeah, because so. you can buy 100% of Manchester United on the stock. Or, or you can buy every share available of Manchester United. You will have zero <laughs> voting rights compared to the Glazers because the so only sales that are for share are the Glazers. It's, so it's like, like there's a deal that's perfect for them and horrible that's for why the, the That's why the whole you know, market value argument doesn't really hold any water because the actual shares that are for sale are essentially worthless. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The only valuable ones are the ones that have voting rights. Obviously, the rest are valuable. They have value. You can trade them. But the ones, if you want to control Manchester United, and the only way you're getting that is if the Glazers agreed to sell them to you. And obviously, they now have done that. The thing with Jim Ratcliffe is some of his shares are Class A shares, which are the ones that don't have quite the, 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 the same voting power. The only thing we need to work out, and maybe we'll find out, maybe we'll never know, mm-hmm. is which percentage of the ones he's buying are these sort of high control ones, which ones are the low control ones, what percentage of the Glazers have sold that. Like, there's a lot to un, uh, sort of unfurl over the next week or so. But yeah, if, if he's owning 25% of Man United and controlling 25%, that would put him probably up there as, you know, as a single individual, one of the... The, the highest shareholders at Manchester United or maybe the highest so mm-hmm. that is a point in terms of the control and power that he might have it'll be interesting to see what happens with all that and obviously Thursday's when we're going to hear the vote we're going to keep you posted we're going to hear from Ben Jacobs I think you're interviewing him tomorrow aren't you Sunshine yes. uh, we'll also get we'll get a few other journalists we'll speak to Kieran Maguire again and get him to explain all this nonsense to me um, Charlie you may not know or you may know that we do a thing called Wally of the Week mm-hmm. pretty self-explanatory just pick someone from last week or from whenever you want, to be honest with you. There's no rules in it. Who's been a right wally and your reasons for picking them? I'm not sure. Oh, gosh, you're proper putting me on the spot here. I don't know who's been a wally. Uh, Shay Jassim? I think Shay Jassim? We, we can go there. Controversial. Can we? Can we? He's been a Wally because he's not bought Manchester United. I don't United. know. I don't I know. mean, you can do what you want. You pick who you want. Yeah, I mean, I'll Andy Crawler picked his own brother when he did it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I, I might great. have to go for Shay. Just, I mean, that news is never gonna be positive, is it, for no. him? So he wow. want, he wanted the club. Obviously, he's got out of it. He didn't think the valuation was worth it in the end. So 
yeah, I'd say he's my Wally of the Week just because he's ended up losing out on it. Fair enough. Who's yours? I can't think of another. No, that's fine. Listen, I get it. I understand. Uh, I, it's, a safe, it's a safe space to share. You can pick any it's Wally international week. of the week There's you want. Mine's probably mi- uh, me. Mine? I've got Because I... Um, I ran the uh, Manchester Half Marathon you yesterday. You just wanted to get that ending. <laughs> yeah. why you oh, up. sorry, Jim. We're not allowed to brag ever. No, yeah. not uh, at all. Without don't see I me bragging. Definitely about didn't mention it when don't I came see me in. Plastering it all over on me social media. Yeah, exactly. Without training, probably. Legend. I Absolute did. Legend. I did train a bit. I did train in the summer, but I haven't. Yeah. I hadn't ran since July, which was stupid. Are you yeah. sore? The org, yeah, oh, yeah. I love um, that. I love the fact you didn't train. I did it. And you did it to be fair, yeah. Yeah, I ran the whole thing. It was it was like two hours forty. Yeah. It's about as slow as you can run a half marathon. But I didn't I didn't walk any of it. I just sort of shuffled along the whole thing. But that's why I'm that's why I'm a Wally because I should have trained harder. <laughs> You're not gone faster no, than better. I, I've, I'm You're better man than I. I think yeah. fair play here because to run a half marathon, you've not run since last time you ran was in Central Park, wasn't it? You were telling you, me. yeah. Um, and that was ages ago and like to, to, to embark on that and to finish it and to not just think oh you know what start this this is a disastrous idea or even just start walking a bit of it which is fine if you want to do that yeah. obviously fair play to you I don't think you're Wally okay. um, do you know who I'm going to go with my Wally of the week cool. you can chuck them in both together Gallup Southgate and Jordan Henderson cool. they both do my head yeah I mean honestly like just stop being thick Right. Oh, why is everyone booing him? Well, we know why he's booing him, but it's not right. I don't know why people are booing me, but I do. You're not making any sense, right? Mm. You know why you're getting booed? Because you came out with this nonsense about being a social justice warrior. Then as soon as you got offered a few quid, you thought, sat that, I'll I'm just throw all the people anymore. that I was sticking up for under the under the bus because I'm getting paid a few quid. Just own it. Mm. And don't stop being pretending why you don't get it. Of course you do. It's a load of rubbish. So yeah. Them two D my head in both of them, Southgate and him. My favourite quote on that was, I don't know why I was booed, but I do understand the fans' view. What? That doesn't wait, make wait, any sense. Yeah. What, what do you mean? What, what are you going? About? How yeah. can you understand their view if you don't know what their view is? And if you do know what the view is, then you know why you're being booed. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what I mean. I People that. just say like sure. a sentence where the, the end of it contradicts the beginning. Yeah. It's like when they get media trained, they're just given a bunch of sentences and it's like, just throw them together and it'll yeah. come out looking no, all right. The, it's one of those things, it's like, it's 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 technically like a sort of, a, you know those magic eyes where if you look at it a certain way it makes a picture yeah what they do when they give media training is they give you about 40 f- sentences like you said and if you put any of those 40 f- sentences in any order just use three of them it will make some kind, kind of sense, of sense yeah. so if you just say you know it's not about me it's about the team we go again next week i understand the fans view and you can just slot them in and he <laughs> thinks if you just like slot half a sentence with that one he's tried to use that model yeah but it's not worked for him has it he's there used to be a game on the iphone the wrong way that was like a football game and uh, part of it you had to memorise the press conferences at the end so it'd flash what lines you had to say and it was just exactly everything just a picture, you said. like a little pick and, and mix of lines and it was oh, it got it went to like eight at one point New Star Soccer amazing game um, I've got a few super chats just go before on. we go um, Keith Kelly says I'm glad uh, you lot are not dividing the fan base and spreading agendas unlike other people uh, please Jay buy Pepsi Max Trade with this money thank you very much Keith thanks Keith and I'll make sure I get that money because you said it was for me yeah, not to be distributed throughout the channel. Um, Nick Collins says, something to consider. If if Jim owns the club when he dies, would his shares go to the club or would his shares be owned by Ineos or would it pass to his kids? I mean, go, that's something go, for us all to consider go, in our own time, go, They actually go to us. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so, pro Sir Jim, when yeah. he dies, me and Joe get all the shares that he's got. So that's why we've been like, nah, we're not feeling the shit, the same thing. We want, no. we want Sir Jim. No, we're keeping it for ourselves. Are you sure? Really? Yeah. Can't get 1%. Uh, uh, I've been at Verma. We're going to build that stadium that's the size of Otsal. <laughs> yeah. I've been at Verma says, I think for football and decisions, you need more than 75%. So Jim having 25 means that the book with football and decisions would rest with Jim. I'm not sure that's true because the Glazers have never owned more than 75%. No. And yet they have made between them all of them. their sporting yeah. decisions. So I don't know if there's an extra level of control you have or maybe there's a bit of misunderstanding there, I'm not sure, but thank you very much, Abinav. Um Russell Thompson says, has Jim paid you lot? Uh, you're making out like this isn't the absolute disaster that it is. Glazers out, yes, he has paid He them. has paid, I just told and, you that. Yeah, We're handsome. getting his shares when he dies. Yeah, we get Listen. 1% of the club now and the further 24% when he dies. Perfect, um, so that explains why, you know, we have a different opinion to you. Uh, Patrick Cassidy says, cheers for having a level head, uh, a level-headed chat up the paddock. Thank you very much. And I respect everyone's opinion. I genuinely do. Um, but I just think that trying to be slightly optimistic on this, Man United is closer to having the Glazers out than they were 12 months ago. Yeah. It's not what I wanted. I wanted them out immediately. I wanted new people in immediately. And we haven't got that. We haven't got any promises on 
on sale, on transfers, on the on the stadium, on the facilities. Hopefully we'll get more of that next week. But I feel more optimistic now than I did 12 months ago, or let's say when the Super League was announced. Yeah, you know, I feel like we're moving in the direction where the Glazer era, I can see it, how it would be behind us now. Whereas for a long time, I just thought they're going to be here forever. So I do feel better than I did. Well, let's, you know, yeah, exactly. And let's not pretend that we were all buzzing about being state owned. And let's not pretend that this yeah. wasn't a state back bid because yeah, it just same. was. So and I'm not going to start contradicting what we said months ago. And it's like, fair enough if that's what you want. I said it at the time. If that's what you wanted, I understand that. But one thing is clear. We ain't getting that now. This is what we're getting. So continue to call out the Glazers and call out Sir Jim Ratcliffe and make sure that, A, we get rid of the Glazers and, B, Sir Jim Ratcliffe does the things that he's promising to do. Mm -hmm. And we'll be the first ones to criticise him if he doesn't. Don't worry about that. Charlie, where can we find you, brother? Charlie is a red. Uh, Twitter, Instagram. I've also got a uh, YouTube channel, Charlie Warwick. Some of my music stuff's on there. What sort of music is it? Hip-hop, all that kind of yes. stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so if you that, fancy listening to any of that, go give that a check out for us. We'll stick some links in the description, man. It's good, good to see you, man. Thank Thank you definitely much, we'll have you on Cheers again soon. That's been Charlie's a red. That's been Joe Smith. I've been Jay Moyer. This has been the Palette Podcast. Don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See ya.